Adaptive thermogenesis. What is it? What does it mean for you and your goals, whether that's losing weight or gaining weight? It applies to both. Um, little, I'm going to give you a little history lesson on it. How do we get uh, to the point in the information where we are right now? And uh, we're just, we'll just kind of go over the, the entire theory, the entire idea, and hopefully this you know, either just leaves you more informed or helps you with your goals, whatever that may be. Okay, so what is adaptive thermogenesis? Now, in you know, fitness and health circles, in popular culture, in that sense, adaptive thermogenesis is really just referring to the body adapting the metabolism to your new style of eating or your new uh, eating behaviors. And what I mean by that is if you're trying to lose weight and you're eating less calories, uh, it refers to the body's ability to slow down the metabolism in order to try and preserve energy. And for someone who's trying to gain weight, this refers to you eating more calories and the body speeding up the metabolism to try and not gain weight. So as far as what the studies say about what's, what's actually taking place is that it's, uh, you know, it's believed that there, there's a change in insulin especially when you're trying to lose weight, there's a, there's a decrease in insulin production as a result in a decrease in glycogen stores. So the thought is that the brain relies heavily on glucose for energy and the body senses that there is less glucose available, therefore it down-regulates the metabolism to try and preserve that energy for the brain. So that's kind of the that's the, the primary thought behind adaptive thermogenesis. Now, secondary to that is a combination of everything else that's involved in energy utilization, okay? And I mean everything from the thyroid, ghrelin, leptin, um, you know, the brown adipose tissue, like there's a lot going on there. Just several other concepts come into play, and that's that's where most of the gray area is And this is how much do those other things have an effect in adaptive thermogenesis, you know? So primary thought is uh, decrease in insulin. Um, so that's really, that's really where most of the science is at right now is the thinking is it has to do a lot with insulin. Okay, now in the, in the scientific community, adaptive thermogenesis actually, it has yet to be clearly defined. And most of the studies, I'll link all the studies that I used to give you all this information. They'll all be linked below in case you want to research more on your own. But uh, in the scientific community, there's kind of this consensus that's written about all the authors of all the studies, they, they address it in one way or another that part of the problem with studying adaptive thermogenesis is that these scientists cannot agree on a common definition. And what I think is the reason for that is because when a scientist does a study, the focus of their study, you know, they're all different. Now, one scientist may be studying weight loss and obesity. Therefore, when studying adaptive thermogenesis, you know, they're looking at the whole person, their body composition, the amount of weight loss, uh, fat-free mass, you know, and on and on. Now, someone who's a scientist more on a, on a cellular level, they may be just studying one type of cell in the body and applying the term adaptive thermogenesis to that type of cell. So that's kind of where I feel like some of the confusion lies in the scientific community, which makes it hard to draw conclusions for the rest of us trying to apply it in the real world. So that's just kind of where we're at with, with the science of it is that we still have yet to have a clear definition. Now, another very large issue when it comes to studying adaptive thermogenesis is there are, there are so many things at play. So studying nutrition in general is difficult because everything matters. Age, race, geographic location, the foods available in that location, you know, the economics of food production, you know, all these things come into play outside of the body. And now when you look at inside the body, 
you've got all kinds of other things at, at play. You know, you've got just your just your regular resting energy expenditure. What is it doing? What's the body composition itself doing? Uh, what's the over the total weight of your subject or your subject group doing? Um, you know, what what are the hormone levels? What are different organs doing? What you know, just all these things, tons and tons of different factors come into play. So when you do a study on something like adaptive thermogenesis, there are tons of factors that need to be accounted for, and this is not easily done, which even leads some scientists to believe that we still can't even prove that adaptive thermogenesis even exists, that it's a thing. But that's where we kind of get into the history of it, all right? So when before there was an obesity problem, right? Before, you know, being overweight was just a common a common thing. If we go back early 1900s, World War 1 time frame, famine was widespread across the world. Now there was there was a there was a time frame 10 20 years or so where tens of millions of people across the world died because of famine and related issues. So people were starving to death all over the world in the millions. So the focus of study when it comes to nutrition was actually on gaining weight. It was it was getting back to a healthy weight from being malnourished. So what they had noticed early on was that when they took people that were malnourished and they overfed them in order to get them to gain weight, there there were some calories that were that couldn't be accounted for. So what I mean by that is the people they calculated how much cal- how many calories, how much energy they needed to give a person for them to gain a certain amount of weight. Well, those people weren't gaining that much weight. So they started to break down where's the where's the energy going? So we're feeding them this energy, but we're not seeing the results from that amount of energy that we think we should be seeing. So what they did, they try to account for, you know, um, heat, production of heat. They try to account for uh, activity. You know, they tracked all people's activity all throughout. And still there was just this, there were these missing calories, they called them, just this missing energy where they, they just couldn't figure out where it was going. So that's what kind of started the thinking that, hey, there's something else going on here. The body is doing something to get rid of these calories. Now, we're trying to get people to gain weight, and they're they're gaining weight, but not the way we think they should be. Okay, so you fast forward to World War II. Ansel Keys, a very famous nutrition scientist, um, he did the world's largest and probably will always be the largest study on human starvation and reason for that is because it'd be considered inhumane now to do a study like what he did and what he did was he took a lot of he took a group of conscientious objectors and he starved them right him and his team they starved them to the to replicate a famine scenario in Europe that's what they did because they were anticipating the end of the war they were going to have to rehabilitate nutritionally a bunch of people who were subject to famine. So he took these objectors and he took these men and he starved them and then refed them to try and gain back their weight. So, I mean, they had to live, uh, I believe it was University of Minnesota or something, they had to live uh, under the stadium. Everything they did was tracked. He watched their every move. They were only allowed to do so much activity, which he calculated for them and you know every aspect of their life was watched so that he could try and account for all these factors that I was talking about earlier well he's the one who really kind of initiated this adaptive thermogenesis that's when it really came into the into the scientific community that hey there is something else going on but we can't exactly pinpoint it all right so from then on the the research that's when things start kind of shifting around right so world war ii ends and now we start seeing the shift from being underweight and trying to overfeed now we've shifted to being overweight 
trying to underfeed. And what we're starting to notice now that we've been studying obesity is the same exact thing happens when you're trying to lose weight. So you eat less and your body just doesn't lose as much as the math, the numbers for what you're eating, say you should be losing less, but you're not. So the same conclusions being drawn that there is a mechanism within the body that is trying to preserve your current state. So whether it's trying to lose body weight or gain body weight, there seems to be a mechanism there somewhere that prevents that from happening. Okay, so that's really the bad news is that whatever your goals are, you know, gaining weight, losing weight, your body for most people is going to be fighting against you because your body has a tendency to want to stay at the weight and or composition that it's currently at. So if you're overweight, you know, and genetics most likely has a role to play in this as well. So if you come from a family of obese people or you come from a family of really thin people, um, you know, this, this most definitely is a factor as well. So that's, that's the bad news is that you got all these factors working against you. The good news is that most of these authors of these studies agree that long term over years your body can actually adjust it will adjust its physiology to your new weight so now me I've gained quite a bit of weight I before I started trying to gain weight I only weighed 125 130 pounds um, you know I weigh 190 pounds today I'm going through a process of gaining weight right now and I can tell you from my own experience, it does not take years. So what I've noticed in myself is that if I gain, so say if I was 160 pounds and I went up to 175 pounds and I stopped overeating, so I went back to my regular diet, I would lose a little bit of weight. So I start at 160, I'd go to 175, go back to my regular diet, and I'd kind of hang out around 170, 172, something like that. So I wasn't, I never went back to eating more, right? And I was never eating less than I was originally. I just went back to my regular standard diet, what I had been eating the whole time I was 160 pounds. But now my body was just 170, 172 pounds consistently. And I stayed there for a year, year and a half without any effort not no longer overeating to remain that size so to me this process only took months you know and I, we're talking three four six months maximum and i've done this the, the entire time i've been gaining weight i will i will gain 10 to 15 pounds overeating uh go back to my regular diet after a couple months Obviously, I'll lose a couple of pounds, and that'll be my new weight. And that's what I've done. I've been doing that for the last 10 years, and I've gained weight, which I'm very happy with, you know, good quality weight, not, you know, I'm still very muscular, good body composition. I'm, I'm happy with it. But yet, when I stop overeating, I don't lose all that weight. I don't go back to 130 pounds. That doesn't happen. So my, so they say it takes years, and from my own experiences, it does not take years. I mean, that may be just me personally, but that, that's my experience with it at least. So the bad news is your body's working against you. The good news is the science and my experience say that your physiology will eventually catch up to your new eating habits. So... If you're trying to lose weight, stick with it. If you're trying to gain weight, stick with it. Just keep going. Um, you know, you you can really do it. You can really get whatever you know, whatever body, whatever health you want. There are a lot of things within your power that you can do uh, to get what you want. So just keep going. Anyway, so I, I hope this video helped you. Uh, if if you got anything out of this video, please just hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And until the next one, we'll see you.